Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Richard for Welsh Tech, and today we have something from Fantex. This is the Fantex Glacier One 360 M 25G2. A nice budget option for an AIO. Should I buy it? Let's find out. Okay, so today we've got an AIO from Fantex. This is the Glacier One 360 M 25G2. It's an all in one liquid cooler, and it says by here. Compatible with LG A1851, which is Intel's latest socket. So, let's get this open. Have a look. Now, you are greeted with foam. Okay. So, this is all the bracketry now, as it supports AMD as well as Intel. So, it's going to come with, like, the cables or the cable attachments. Uh, it's going to come with all the brackets you need, thermal paste, and so forth. And then, of course, then we've got the AIO itself, but we've got the fans first. So let's have a look at the fans. Now, these are pre-done fans, which, if you look by here at the end, are a proprietary cable. But what I will say is a lot of brands these days are going that route to save for cable management. So, I mean, you know, yes, I could moan about pr uh, proprietary cables, but to be honest, it's helping the consumer with cable management, which is in a way a good thing. But obviously it is keeping you to one particular cable, but that's fine, I guess. So there's the fans. Now let's get the AIO out and then we'll have a look. Okay, so there was a few other bits as well in the accessories. It does come in the cables, which these do go to 4-pin uh, and to our ARGB. It's got these little parts here. I'm guessing this is to go over it or other parts. I mean, that's what it looks like. It could be. I don't know what these are for, but that's what it looks like anyway. Now, I like the look at this, but the problem is, is this doesn't come off. Oh, wait, wait, does it? Yes, it does. There we go. Right. Ooh, okay. So it does have a little fan. That would be for the VRMs, of course. That's just to help with airflow. It does come with pre-applied thermal paste. I'm not going to touch that. But that looks cool. I like that. It's got a mirror effect, so when it's under this, then it will glow. So that's quite cool. So put this back on. I'm not sure my skills very much better, but oh, there we go. Right, okay. And then the radiator, obviously it's a standard radiator, but it does have the Fantex logo done on the radiator itself. Now, what we'll do first of all is we'll get to the radiator as well as the pump. Now, the first of all, now we'll get to the CPUs that this does support. Now, it does support LGA D series, so that'll be 1150, 1151, 1155, uh, 1200, 1700, uh, 2011, 2011, dash 3, and 2066. Obviously, this does support... Uh, LGA uh, 1851 as well, like it says on the bo on the box. Now this does support AM4, AM5, TR4, X, uh, STR, X4, and SWRX8. As for the radiator dimensions, it's 300, uh, 397 by 120 by 27, 27 being the thickness. Now, as for the pump, the pump which is located here, which is basically the normal way to actually locate a pump, uh, the my motor speed is 3100 rpm the power that the pump does consume is 0.2 a amps or oh, that's between that and 33 amps with a 12 volt dc between 3.36 watt and 3.96 watt the connector is a three pin watt ah oh, well that sucks I don't like that it's a three pin, but oh well. Uh, it's a 400 millimeter uh, uh, tube. The pump noise, according to them, is 20 decibels with a copper base, ABS. 1100, no, 1000 and 3000 RPM. Is that correct? Wow. The start pressure is uh, 1.2 millimeter H2O. That's not very good. The CFM is... Oh, that's that fan. This fan, sorry. That's that fan. That's that fan. And the start pressure is 1.2 millimeter H2O with a air pressure or airflow of 9.8 CFM. Okay, cool. Now, as for the, the tubes, the tube length is 400 millimeters. Diameter is 12.5 millimeters. And, of course, then when it comes to the fans. Now, these are... Uh, Gen 2 DRGB, 
the 120 by 120 by 25 the speeds range between 350 rpm and 2000 this the airflow is 72.72 cfm with a 2.51 millimeter h2o with a noise decibel written at 35.13 and the connector is a legu what leg six connector one millimeter 120 millimeter daisy chain oh right okay that's the cable so these are fully daisy chainable and okay that's that's pretty much it when it comes to the specs let's get this on the test bench and see how good it is okay so as for the installation so first of all you get these these are the standoffs for the motherboard and they've already got the thread in now they might seem a bit long but that's why we'll get to that so what you want to do is put them in here like that you don't really want to tighten these down because the once we get to the uh block insulation uh you will understand why but these will just tighten down just normal tightening you don't really need to tighten these down that much so, right so that's that now when it comes to the amd bracket this is the bracket here so what you want to do is put it like this like that okay like that just slide in and done so thermal piss application obviously it's going to vary it's going to vary on what really you've read but that's about enough for am5 a bit more than that's a little bit much but that's fine so what you want to do is grab this now like this okay like this and where it's got fan text you want to place this here there place it down just like that but then you get these these are the mount in so you want to do is one one side like that okay you don't need to tighten these down yet because you're better off doing this in the crisscross pattern uh, crisscross pattern and i will show you that now so just get them situated just to keep the block on okay so now i'm using a ratchet screwdriver but you don't have to use that so just one side one side one side and then basically just uh continue the process until it full, fully bottoms out now that's done now what i'm going to show you now is how to connect the fans and the pump now this is going to be coming off the pump block as you can see that will be the three pin which is unfortunate will it be for the pump now it comes with this weird connector it's a proprietary cable but the connection for the fans will be the exact same so all you want to do is place it there and then at the back then you put this at the back and then what i'm going to show you is the argb and the connection for the fans okay so when it comes to the pwm headers what you'll be looking for that is an argb header well there it's got three pins and it is an argb header now as for pwm it will be more situated by here where that's a cpu fan but this this it's exactly the same header except that one will be for the cpu fans now what you want to do is grab one end like this it's only keyed one way so you plug it in just like this like that and then for the argb all you want to do is grab that and then put it on like this make sure that you don't tighten or push down too hard because you can bend the pins and that's it for the insulation
This is the Fantex Glacier 360. These are the fans at 50% fan speed. They are a bit noisier 50%. Same thing but 100% fan speed. At 100% fan speed, these fans are very loud. So, when it comes to the overall test system, well, it is my AM5 platform. It's a Ryzen 9 7900. It's got 32 gigs of DDR5. It's got a B850 Wi-Fi motherboard. It's got a 2 terabyte Gen 5 drive. It's got an RX 7800 XT. It's got a 1,000 watt cooling power supply as well as housed in the Be Quiet Shadowbase 800 FX case. So when it comes to the overall testing, well, it's my same random uh, benchmarks I always do. It is Cinnamon Shot 23, Blender Pavilion, Blender Classroom, and 3D Mark Speed Test. Why? Because it does hit the CPU in differently in each test. So 50 and 100% fan speed. Let's start with the 50% fan speed. Now, the CPU power draw high was 174 watts with the low 161. The CPU clocks were high at 5.4 with a low at 5.1. Now, for Cinebench R23, the idles are 29 with a max of 81. Blender Pavilion, idles 29 with a max of 80. Idles tw uh, on Blender Classroom, idles 29 with a max of 80. And 3D Mark Speed Test, idles 29 with a max of 76 Celsius. Now, when it comes to the 100% fan speed, the CPU power draw high was 171 watts with a low at 166, and the CPU clocks were exactly the same at high at 5.4 and low at 5.1. Now, for the Cinebench R23 run, the idles were 30 with a max of 79. The Blender Pavilion was idles at 30 with a max of 78. Blender Classroom, idles 30 with a max of 78. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles are 30 with a max of 75. So, when it comes to actually comparing this with other brands now as you already just saw the thermals are very very good especially for a 360 i have had 360 do over 81 degrees so this what i'll do now is show you a graph i'll put up a few known ones that i've actually tested previously like from be quiet from uh thermal right as well as like deep cool now what you're going to probably see here is a variance when it comes to the thermals now 3d mark cpu test does tend to hit the cpu differently in each test it doesn't matter because it does do multi-threading as well single threading uh performance uh benchmarking so it's it's weird that particular test always it fluctuates between the overall uh temperatures but i keep using it because it's always different and it's always taxing on the cpu because it starts from a multi-threaded load all the way down to single and then of course with cinebench that is the main one it's the highest in uh instruction set on any cpu but obviously it's going to show you the overall differences of that this one by here in particularly does beat majority of all my aios i've got in on or i've actually shown on the channel okay so what we'll do first of all is start with my initial thoughts on the aio now first of all if you are a fan of the channel you'll probably know that i like the infinity mirror effect now not a lot of brands use that effect some do and not all, not every single one but it's a an effect that i actually do like myself it's personally attractive because it looks cool as well especially when it's lit up with rgb now the things i like first of all we start with i like the the way the fans are connected yeah it's a little bit junky with just screws but it's easy and it's also not going to come apart now it's, it's got a little bit of flex but it's quite steady and it's not going to come off the aio the overall fans the design the overall look is very nice i like the pump housing i like that design especially with the um the infinity mirror vrm fan inside i like the vrm fan very very nice i like the overall design the color especially the white is is absolutely gorgeous but here are the things i don't like now i don't like the proprietary cable i think in 2025 i think brands should start or at least get away from the pro uh, proprietary cables or at least bring in something that's a bit more user friendly for the user instant now yeah this looks like a standard uh six pin connector but a lot of brands do use different types of connectors they use six as well as 12 i've seen a variant of different cables especially the proprietary ones from different brands and some of them aren't interchangeable some of them are, are just bespoke to that brand now i wish that a lot of brands would just go the standard route but i understand why now i don't like the fact that the pump is a three pin please 
in 2025. We need to get rid of the three pin. We need to put a four pin on all pumps. It's much easier. At least the user has got full controllability. With three pin, it doesn't. It just runs at that constant speed in DC. It's ridiculous. I prefer a four pin. But saying that, that's just my little tandem. Now, the overall, when it comes to like price, the, the obviously this is more now there's budget and then there's mid-tier and then there's high-end now when it comes to budget you've got something like thermal right uh their aios some of them range from like a 360 to, down to 55 pound and that was what i would call a budget the mid-tier is that 80 to 120 pound mark that is the mid-tier up there and then of course over 150 then beyond is high-end more for an aio this actually sits in between the mid-tier and the performance is actually very well it performs much better than a lot of the other AIO, especially ones that I've had from different brands, and it performs very well, so it's a good thing by there. But you know, it's one of them things. So when it comes to like final thoughts, I really think it's a good value for what you're getting. Yet yeah, there's some quirks and quonks, but you still you're getting what your money's worth. It's definitely worth the overall uh 98 pound. It's definitely in that wet, very good balanced area of mid-tier AIO. Now, when it comes to the overall pricing, if you guys want to save money, then if you use this code, that, this link, or this pop, uh, this code that pops up on the screen back here on backtotheoffice.co.uk, you will save 5% off. So that's extra money you're saving if you buy specifically with backtotheoffice.co.uk. They do list this in the black and white, and they do have a, I believe, the 360 as well as the 240. So you could have any variant, and you just use my code that pops up back here, and you'll get a 5% instant uh, discount on the checkout at for over uh, orders over £50. Now, if you like this type of content like AIOs and stuff as you know my channel is more around the AIOs as well as CPUs but I am trying to branch out like cases um, graphs cards motherboards CPU stuff like that. I'm trying to get into different realms and I will be bringing a lot more of that content here next year so make sure you subscribe to the channel and as always a big thank you to all the brands to support me I do really appreciate it without the brands I wouldn't be able to make content but as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and week ahead of you. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Richard Welsh Tech. Goodbye.